Ghana. There was a time in ancient nations that achieved a system of writing less than 1% of the population. Less than 1% of the population learned how to read and learn how to write. So when Westerners decided to frame their civilization and give everybody the opportunity to read and write, they had to make sure that it was still just a select few people that understood things. You know, what you're learning when you're learning uh, uh, science, chemistry, biology, astrology, that is the occult. That, that is, those are the major occult secrets. So, they use several tactics to get you to either think you found what you're looking for or to make sure you don't find what you are looking for. They use deception, they use trickery, they use blinds, and they speak in code. Now, um, one of the things that I, I do is just simply using word etymology and language, I, I use it as a as a red from trails for you to get an understanding of how this was spoken of in the ancient, let's call it mystery schools, in the ancient educational system, in the, in the universities back in uh, Kemet and Nubia, you know, Canaan, and, uh, and stuff like that. The highest science is taught were how the universe got created. The most important doctrine for people to, to, uh, to understand that high priests and priestesses learned was, you know, how, how this even came, came to be. Yeah, I, I, I mean, since you were here, since you were in it, understanding is very, development would, would make sense for you having achieved some type of enlightenment. And those are uh, called cosmological doctrines or, or, or uh, creation stories. Every ancient culture has its creation stories, its various creation stories. When I was growing up in Barbados, we, we got to see some of the creation stories of, of the Caribs and Arawaks, meaning uh, one particular deity birthed them as a people. You know, on a tribal level, a people will have an individual creation story for how that people came to be. On a universal level, now you're dealing with how, how the universe itself came to be. Uh, uh, other creation stories that you will find is how different areas of the universe got developed into solar systems and these types of things. These became the mythological accounts and allegories that became religious doctrine. You know, it is shown uh, through the story of Jesus. A lot of the Christian accounts of the story of Jesus are astrological events. Rolled all into one person. Prior, prior to that, as opposed to rolling it into one person, they would keep it as the accounts of what deities on the sides of planets and suns and constellations did. So, let's say you're looking at Sumer, where they are speaking of Marduk and him vanquishing Tiamat. You know, Marduk is a star, a sun, a very, very huge one. One of the 50 biggest suns in the entire universe. And, you know, Tiamat is, is called the, she is at first the mother of chaos. She is chaos, disorder, you know, lack of order. Lack of order could be seen as just empty space. No constellations, no stars, no solar systems, nothing. You know? And bringing order, developing that area of the universe, that becomes a creation story. So I found that most people didn't, didn't un understand what these ancient people are saying because they are not starting from the beginning one and two, there's a, a lot of confusion. Now, how does this relate to you as an individual and your spiritual e evolution? 
you know, watch the goal. Because a another thing that I found is that the goals that most people are being given as the so-called spiritual goal is a goal you can't attain. Is a goal that doesn't exist. So they're taking people for a ride. Having you waste a, a whole lot of your energy, your um, mental processing time, looking for something that doesn't even really, really exist. It was primarily facilitated through the English language, the words in the English language, the very alphabet and writing system in the English language, and then the concept associated with the words. If you, when you talk about peace as, um, you know, no more conflicts and these type, type of things, that's not going to happen. There will always be some type of conflict, right. you know. You know, peace. Peace. Most people, uh, as they get tired and beat down by Western civilization, their 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 mind now starts to a uh, uh, call for a uh, peace. Right. Which right. means they. Which means basically, I give up. Right. I don't want any more hardships. I want an easy life. You're gonna find that the people that get the furthest, and I'm not even talking about the heads, are people who know that you always have to be very willing to fight. And 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 if it takes getting the proper nutrition and the proper tools, then that's what it takes. If you can't become uh, a, a, a strong, you can't become a successful a, a, a successful person without trials and tribulations. Now, when you look at the human body, because a very good area to uh, study really is human physiology. If, if you want to understand better so-called spirituality, you could study human phys physiology. Now, people who lift weights or exercise hard, you know, they're stronger than other people who don't and can be bigger. Because you gotta rip your muscles apart, and when they repair, you get bigger. Meaning that you can't avoid pain and trauma if you want to call it suffering. If you want to become a bigger, stronger, and wiser person. So if you're looking for peace, as opposed to there's a time for rest, and there's a time for work, you are going to be running in circles, and you're just going to ruin your life. Meaning, peace is not the goal. Peace is something you need for rest and recuperation. But then you gotta get back out there and fight.